open the other Excel, uh, the uh, instructions file. So here are the instructions. So let's go over the instructions file. In the instructions, it says to open the file, which we just did, and save the file with the two at the end of it. So go ahead and click Enable Editing, and then File, and then Save As, and then just put a two at the end here. And click on Save. And then once it's saved, then uh, it's going to tell you to um, download the support file, which we already have. You know, we saw that a while ago. And then we're going to open uh, our ex 19 eom one which is this one right here. Make sure your name is there in cell B6. If it doesn't appear there, then there's something wrong. You contact me and uh, we'll get it figured out. Next thing I need you to do is I want you to go over the, the, the different tabs. First of all, you have your annual sales. So what we're going to do is we're going to fill in the sales totals here. We're going to pull an accessory total in from another worksheet. We're going to use some uh, some fill series to fill in some uh, data here. Then we're going to figure out what our 22, 22 cells are based on, a 1.5% increase, so on and so forth. Here are quarter one sales, and we're going to figure out what our increase will be if we add a percent increase. Same thing for quarter two, same thing for quarter three, and same thing for quarter four. So we have data from 2021. We're going to project to 2022. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and start working on step number one. So step number one says Gilbert Ray is financial analyst for Flexi Wireless Communications, a telecommunications company in Sacramento, California. In addition to cell phones and wireless plans, Flexi sells electronic accessories such as charge pads and cell headphones. Gilbert is analyzing the revenue generated from the sales of accessories and asked you to help in completing the analysis. So it wants us to go to the sales analysis or annual sales worksheet, which we're on right now. And then the sales range is B5 to B9. It wants us to put the totals in, okay? He wants us to enter a formula using the sum function and then 3D references to get the total sales from each of the different quarters, okay? So this is gonna be the yearly total. Our total here for quarter one is here. Our total from quarter two is here. Our total from quarter three is here. And our total from quarter four is here. So let's go back to here to sales. We're going to put our equal and then we're going to type in sum. Remember, sum is a range, a range of numbers, a range of numbers. So we're going to put in our sum in our parentheses, and then we're going to start with our first range. So I'm going to click on quarter one, click on the cell. Now we have our marquee box, and I want you to hold the shift button down and click on quarter two, quarter three, and quarter four. And what it's going to do is it's going to do the sum of ranges quarter one to quarter four in cells B5. And hit enter. And it puts $123,274.42 there. If you'll scroll down, you'll notice that that's the exact amount of money it should be $123,274.42. Okay. So, and then we go back up to step one, and it says fill the range B6 to B9 with the formula that we put in B5. So, we're going to click here, we'll auto fill down, and it's going to auto fill those down. Okay, and again, it's going to pull the data from each of the other worksheets for all of the totals. Okay, we have one million forty thousand four hundred sixty dollars and fifteen cents. We scroll down, and that's what we have: one million forty thousand four hundred sixty dollars and fifteen cents. So we're doing it right so far. Okay, so that's step one. Step two: Gilbert wants to display the total accessory sales from the previous year. This data is stored in another worksheet. So this is where we're going to be using that support worksheet. Okay, so in cell B12 right here, it wants us to put the total from another worksheet. So I'm going to show you how to do that. So go ahead and open the support file now, if you haven't opened it already. This is our support file, okay? And we have our total sales here of our accessories. So that's what we're going to put in here. So I'm going to move this picture over, this, this sheet over here. And then total accessories is going to equal, and I'm going to click on this cell. Oops, I forgot to enable editing. My bad. Let me go back up. Editing. Open the worksheet again. Support file. Okay, now let's do it. Equals, and then this worksheet. 
Okay. Now, if you'll notice, it puts some Archaea box around this other Excel worksheet. And if you and if you see here in our formula bar, it says equals the file name of the file of this spreadsheet. Yours won't have a two in it. I've downloaded mine several times, so I have more than one. And then it has the worksheet name, accessories with the explanation point. That means it's a worksheet name. And then cell B10 on the accessories worksheet. So the accessories worksheet. And then just hit enter. And it put it in there, 983,000. Now, why couldn't we copy and paste it? Well, if you copy and paste it, it's going to copy and paste this number into here. But if I change this number here later, it may or may not change this because we want them to be linked. So by having this link, if I change this number, like if I change this number to uh, 20,000, it automatically changes the number here too, okay? So let me find my undo button so I don't screw everything up. Where is my undo button? That's a fire. Okay, all right, so we're finished with this sheet. So I'm gonna go ahead and close that. And then I'm gonna go back into here and I'm gonna go ahead and finish out some more of the parts. So we finished with the support worksheet, we closed it. Now, number three, Gilbert wants to make some changes to all five worksheets, which have the same structure. And the annual sales, quarter one, quarter two, quarter three, and quarter four worksheets. So what he wants us to do is in cell F1, which is right here, he wants us to put a formula using the today function, but he wants us to put it on all five worksheets at the same time. So to do that, we're gonna hold our shift button down and we're gonna select all five worksheets at the same time. And we're going to click on cell F1 and we're going to put equals today. Open and close parentheses, hit enter, and put it in there. Okay, now if I click on quarter one, it's there. If I click on quarter two, it's there. Quarter three, it's there. Quarter four, it's there. So we just did all of that. Okay, so I'm going to hit enter. I already did, and it's off of that. So step number three is done. Step number four in the display range D5 to D9 on all five worksheets, I still have all, all five still selected. Gilbert wants to project next year's sales for each accessory rounded up to a zero decimal places so that the values are easier to remember. So we're going to use the round function right here. And so D5 in our formula using the roundup function that adds the sales for batteries and chargers in 2021 to the sales. So plus the sales for the same accessories times the projected increase. We round the result up to zero decimal places. So we're going to put right here in this. I'll put equal cells and round up. Now round up just rounds it up to a, a whole, next whole number or digits or decimal points, but we're gonna have zero decimals. So we'll fix that in a minute. So now we're in this part right here and the bold part says number. So this is where we're gonna put our formula. So I'm gonna put a parentheses again to put our formula and it's gonna be this cell plus this cell again times the percent increase and then close parentheses. Now, because of PEMDAS, it's gonna multiply B5 times C5 and then add it to the original cells to get the percent increase, okay? Mm -hmm. So this is actually finding the percent. Now we're gonna hit the comma button and we're down on the second part of the formula, which is the number of digits. And we want zero digits in our decimals and then hit enter. And then it gets us $125,124. Scroll down. If you look, it's $125,124. So now we can fill down. And now we have all of our, our data for the sales in $1,063,410. Okay. Now, not only did we just do this one, but we also did all of the other sales because we did the same formula. So see, we filled in quarter one. We filled it in for quarter two, we filled it in for quarter three, and we filled it in for four, quarter four, because all of our percents are the same and the formulas are exactly the same. So we just did all of that work by doing that one for formula and filling down because we had all the worksheets selected. Okay, so that was step four. Step five is ungroup the worksheets. So to do that, you hold the shift button down again, and then you just uncheck the ones that you don't want. And then in the quarter name in cell five, annual sales worksheet, fill the range G1 to I5 with the names of the remaining quarters. Now, in my opinion, it's easier just to type in quarter one, quarter two, and quarter three, or use the autofill handle 
but it wants us to use the fill series. So we're going to do it the way it tells us to. We'll make it bigger so I can see everything. We're going to use the fill button here. We're going to fill the series. We're going to auto fill it. So it's going to say Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4. And it's a series of rows. So this is the row. So click it. It puts Q1, Q2, Q3, and Q4. Again, I don't think it's that big a deal uh, because it's only three different things. But if it was like a whole long list of things, then I guess the fill handle would be more beneficial. Okay. Now, step six says in the first quarter of the year, Flexi Wireless sold 2,550 units of a new smart home product called Home Hub. The company wants to increase the sales of the new product to 3,000 3, units by the fourth quarter. Project the sales in quarters two and three by filling the series of the projection range F7 to I7 with a linear trend. So we're going to select the selection. We'll go to fill series. We're going to use a linear trend. So linear. And then click on trend and then click OK. And it gives us 251, 2552, and 2553. OK, I did something wrong. Let me go back and look. Oh, wait, I know what I did wrong. These. There we go. I had the wrong selection selected. It's supposed to be F7 to I7. Fill, series, and a linear trend. OK, there we go. So 2550 is in quarter one, we need to have it 2700 by quarter two, we need to have 2850 sold by quarter three, and that would get us to 3000 by quarter four. Okay, so that's how much we need to sell in total for each other. Okay, next one. Uh, Gilbert also wants to know how many home HUD units the so company would sell if sales increased by 2% each quarter. So project the growth of sales quarters two, three, and four. For the second projection, F9 to I9, based on a growth trend using 1.02 as a step. Okay, 2% is 0.02, but we have to add the 1 to it as well to increase it. So that's why it's 1.02. So we're going to select the selection, go to fill, series, and this time we're going to use a step value and we're going to do a growth because we want it to grow by 1.02 or 2%. Click OK. And this is our, our goal. All right, we can scroll down and look and see what our goal is. Our matches what uh, the answer sheet is. So if we increase by 2% each, each month or each quarter, we'll have 2,700 uh, units sold. So we really need to increase by more than 3% if we're going to hit our goal of 3,000, if this is our end up, ends up being our goal. Okay, almost done. The next thing we want to do is we want to visualize all of this data in the 2D pie chart. So it says the accessories names are A5 to A19. Accessory names are A5 to A19. And our data is B5 to B9. I mean, A5 to A9 and then B5 to B9. Okay. So that's what we're going to look at. And then it wants us to put the chart in the upper left corner, A14, all the way down to D30. So I'm going to select the area with our labels and our data. And then I'm going to go in here to insert. And then I'm going to go to pie chart. I'm going to do 2D pie chart. I'm going to put it here. And then it says A, what did it say? A13 or A14? A14 and to D30. So I'm going to click and drag it down A14 into D30. Now it just says that the bottom right has to be in D30. So I'm going to put it like that. So we've got it in there. Now we need to make the pie chart uh, information change. So accessory sales in 2021 is the chart title. So I'm just going to click on the chart title. Oops, I accidentally deleted it. Go back into it. And we're going to change it to accessory sales. 2021. And then it says, add the data labels to the chart on inside end of each slice, display the value and percentage uh, in the data label. So right here, add chart element, data labels, and it wants us to do uh, inside end. So inside end, so we'll put those in there. And then it wants us to display the value and the data labels. So we're going to go to,
more data label options here. And it wants us to add the percentage. Okay. So now we have the, the value and the percentage label is what it says. Okay. Now it says go to quarter one worksheet. Gilbert wants to use a copy of the worksheet to track sales in 2022. So we'll finish with the data labels. So in quarter one, it wants us to create a copy of quarter one worksheet and put it at the end of the workbook and rename it quarter one 2022. So quarter one's right here. I'm going to right click it and I'm going to put move or copy. We're going to set create a copy. We want to move it to the end and the copy. Yeah, create a copy, move to the end. Okay, now that it's moved to the end, now we need to right click it and rename it. And it wants us to say quarter one, 2022. So I'm gonna click quarter one, 2022, get rid of all the extra data on there. Quarter one, 2022. And then on the quarter one, 2022 worksheet, clear only the contents of the range B5 to B9. So let's do that, B5 to B9, B5 to B9, clear content. So we're gonna go here to home, and I think I have to open up sales, editing, yeah, editing, and then clear, do the drop down and clear contents. We don't want to clear the formulas or formatting, just the contents. So clear the contents and it got rid of all the contents. And then in D4, it wants us to change it to 2023 sales. So we, in B4, it wants us 2022 sales. And in D4, 2023 sales. Okay, and then your workbook should look like the final figures in the following pages. So let's look it over once real quick here. Annual sales, that's what ours looks like, we got that. Then the only other thing that we really changed is quarter one. So we can scroll down here to quarter one. And it looks like, that's right, okay. So we are done. Now all you have to do is save it and upload it. So make sure you save it, click the save button and then upload it to the site, okay? And the way you upload it is you click here. And then once you upload it, you just click it here and then click on open and then check marks and then submit and you are done. But thank you for watching and hopefully this helped you out a whole lot.